And now schistosomiasis, or as it's more commonly known, bilharzia. Uh, you would catch this from uh, infected fresh water, and it's actually a, a parasitic worm that um, is released from snails that are in the fresh water, usually around the reeds, and you would go swimming or just have contact with the fresh water, and these tiny, tiny little parasitic worms will go through your skin. Uh, they can actually get through your skin in next to no time. Um, some will be through very, very rapidly. Others can take up to 10, 15 minutes to work their way through your skin, but because they're you know, so tiny, you, you can't see them, you can't feel them, you don't know you're there, they're there. Once they're in the skin, they go to uh, a certain area of the body. Depending on which part of the world you're in, um, they tend to have certain species which tend to have certain places in the body that they tend to prefer. They make their way to that area, they mature, produce eggs, and it's those eggs which the humans then release back into infected water, uh, back into water, which they infect. The eggs move through, it's another part of the life cycle, they hatch, they will then infect a certain type of snail that's living in that fresh water. The uh, infection matures and little these microscopic worms are released from the snail back into the water where they go look for a human host. So this is a, a cycle which is ongoing and will continue uh, ad infinitum. And this is how people get infected again and again and again and how a higher worm burden causes more severe illness. Um, it is a disease that uh, will affect people worldwide and there are thought to be up to 200 million cases worldwide. Um, primarily it's going to be in uh, Africa and one of the, the main areas is actually Lake Malawi but um, a lot of fresh water in Africa is, inf is infected, a lot of water in Asia, a lot of water in Americas and southern China. There are different types of uh, bilharzia and each of those areas that I mentioned, Asia, Africa, the Americas and parts of China tend to have um, their own species but um, yeah, that's just because they haven't moved around quite as much and the species are, are quite similar causing the same types of illness. What tends to be the difference is that they'll, they'll actually find a different part of your body to infect. What sort of symptoms are you going to get? How are you going to know that you've been infected? Well, very often you won't. And like I said, it tends to be the higher worm burdens that are, um, you know, will cause much more severe illness in local people. And if you as a traveller only get infected by one or two worms, very often you'll have virtually no signs and symptoms until much later on in a disease. Um, but if you are going to have a, a sign or symptom, shortly after the, the little worm has just um, burrowed through your skin, you're going to have a, a minor allergic reaction. You're going to have an itch, a rash, uh, major, you know, a bit of redness in the area. Um, maybe a couple of months later, one to two months later, uh, and this is quite indicative of the, the time uh, of this, you will get a fever, chills, uh, very often a cough and aches and pains. Now they in themselves are very difficult to distinguish with to the signs and symptoms of, of many other illnesses that you would have been exposed to. But the one to two months after is indicative of uh, schistosomiasis if you actually get these. There are different types of worms and like uh, I mentioned there are um, the different areas, uh, there's Africa, Asia, South China, the Americas. Different types of worms tend to live in um, you know, different areas um, and these worms will in infect different parts of the human. Sometimes it will be liver, sometimes it will be intestines, sometimes bladder and obviously that in turn will cause different signs and symptoms. A small worm burden um, may cause you know, no illness for many many years and what tends to happen is not a reaction to the worms but it's actually a reaction to the eggs that the worms are producing and it's an allergic reaction and what will happen over a period of time, the area that the, the worms are living and that the eggs are being released into will be constantly aggravated and the allergic response will build and over time you'll get scar tissue being built up um, and as that scar tissue grows, it becomes worse, so the signs and symptoms become worse. So for instance, you've got um, a small worm burden in the bladder. Um, over a period of years, eggs are being re released, slowly you get a build-up of the scar tissue. The first signs or symptoms you'll get of a bladder infection will be perhaps blood in the urine. If it's in the intestines, the first sign may well be uh, bladder obstru uh, bowel obstruction because of a build-up of the scar tissue, or perhaps again, um, 
contamination of your faeces with blood. Uh, if it's in the liver, um, what happens is as the liver scarification increases, uh, the blood finds it harder to get through the, the liver. The blood pressure in those vessels just before the, blood, uh, before the liver will build and build and build. And eventually, if you're really, really unlucky, what might happen is one of those vessels may burst very often into the esophagus and it will be vomiting of blood will be the first sign that you have um, a severe liver infection. Now, it's very rare for people that only spend a short period of time in an area to become infected to such a degree that you know, these severe uh, disease states will occur. Um, and you may not actually know that you've got it at all. And so what you must do is if you've been in an area that's been infected, you should go for a blood test after you get back, several months after you get back, to allow the, uh, the worm to progress through its standard life cycle until it starts producing the worms and you start producing an allergic reaction um, to the eggs um, that you can get a, a positive blood test. It's very easy to treat. Um, depending on what type of worm you've got, you'll be given a different dosage of usually the same drug. Um, but uh, it's generally very well tolerated and treatment can be complete. How do you prevent it? Well, ideally, um, you don't wash in contaminated water, you don't shower, and you don't swim in it. Now, that could well be absolutely impossible. So what you need to do is, if you're going for a swim, perhaps use DEET, because there does seem to be some evidence that DEET will be protecting you against the, the initial infection from the tiny parasitic worms. Uh, also, limit your exposure down to a, a few minutes if you can and when you come out from having your shower or your, your quick swim give yourself a good rub down with a, a harsh towel and what that will do is those parasites which have knocked those little worms that have not quite made it through the skin all the way will be damaged um, the, the, uh, the tiny bit that's still sticking out from the skin will be wiped off uh, and the worm will die leading to no infection um, and you may still get you know, just a, a slight bit of irritation at the, the site because they, you know, the head has, has penetrated the skin, but certainly um, you, know, you, you won't get a, a severe infection.